There is a lot of prep work that has already been done where we pick up this video. Please follow the link provided at the end of this video for additional assistance with all the prep that needs to be done to get you to this stage. Once the prep work is done, disconnect the mass airflow sensor from the intake tube, indicated by the yellow arrow, unplug it, and then place it off to the side in a plastic bag to prevent it from getting dirty. Disconnect the two hose clamps that hold on the intake tube, orange arrow, and then pull it back and remove it from the car. This photo shows a variety of important items that need to be disconnected. The red arrow points to the electrical junction box. Snap up on the plastic black covers, shown open here, indicated by the blue arrow, and then disconnect the electrical cable underneath, red arrow. Make sure the battery is disconnected before you do this. The green arrow shows the power steering reservoir, which you will need to disconnect and remove in order to maneuver the air conditioning hoses around the engine compartment. Pull off the cap and use a turkey baster or other suction device to siphon out the fluid in the reservoir. The insert photo, orange arrow, shows the thumb wheel on the lower part of the power steering reservoir. Twist this counterclockwise to disconnect it and remove it from the engine. Finally, the yellow arrow shows the power brake vacuum line. It's easiest just to remove the two screws and pull it off of the manifold. Shown here is the secondary air injection pump. Disconnect the hose, green arrow, and the electrical connection, blue arrow, and the bolts that mount it to the bracket. Remove it from the engine compartment. Also disconnect the engine ground strap, red arrow. It's a good time to disconnect the oil filler neck, yellow arrow. Loosen the clamp, purple arrow, and you should be able to pull the filler neck out. You can now completely remove it and disconnect it from the rear trunk after you get the transmission out. Again, please follow the link provided at the end of this video for additional assistance with removing the transmission. The AC compressor will remain in the car so that you do not need to open any of the lines. The compressor is held on by two bolts in the front and one hidden in the rear underneath the manifold. The orange arrow shows the right side compressor bolt. You can access and remove this bolt from the passenger compartment. Image B, the other bolt can be accessed by using a swivel socket, green arrow, through a gap in between the intake manifold. Insert C and D, take some plastic wrap and lay it down on the back of your passenger compartment and pull the compressor out of its mounting place and place it on top of the engine. As the engine is lowered, you will need to route the hoses out of the channels and tuck them into the passenger compartment. Illustrated here is the rear trunk with the carpet already removed, which you will cover in the prep articles. You need to disconnect the engine wire harness from the DME, green arrow, and the chassis harness, red arrows. Also disconnect the engine wiring harness ground point from its mounting point on the rear firewall, blue arrow. Finally, push in on the big grommet and stuff the entire wiring harness through the big hole in the firewall and place it neatly on top of the engine, purple arrow. Moving on to the fuel lines, you should have already taken all of the precautions earlier when working with fuel, but make sure you have your glasses on and a small bucket handy when you unplug the lines. There may be a small amount of fuel still trapped in the system and it will leak out onto you and your garage floor. Disconnect these only when you have a really good ventilation and are able to dissipate the fumes. The yellow arrows show the power steering pressure line, which is lowered with the engine. The blue arrows show the power steering return line, which is disconnected in the engine just above the blue arrow. This photo shows the engine compartment with the engine removed. If you are having difficulty getting the car high enough to pull out the engine, then you can remove the chassis support brace shown by the yellow arrows. Be sure to reinstall this support brace if you put the car back down on its wheels at some point. And you will also need to have the alignment reset when you're finished working on this project. This image shows the disconnection of the power steering pressure line, yellow arrow. You only need to disconnect the pressure line, the return line, green arrow, is disconnected further up inside the engine compartment. Be careful not to lose the small pieces that are integral to this connection. You will need them when reinstalling. In this image, there are two items that are a bit difficult to disconnect. The power steering return line has a rubber hose at this junction and makes into a barb attached to another hose. 
Remove the clamp and then pull off the hose. Do not cut this hose, it is expensive and not easy to replace. The insert shows the fuel tank vent line connection which has made it underneath the manifold. It is also very difficult to get to. You have to reach in there and pull or disconnect the line further upstream. Even though this looks a little bit like one, this is not a ground strap. It's a safety strap that attaches the engine to the chassis support brace that spans the center of the car. Disconnect it from the engine by removing the bolt shown, yellow arrow. If you have a zip tie handy, you might want to zip tie it to the support brace so that it doesn't get in the way when you lower the engine. On the 1999 and earlier cars, the throttle was controlled by an actual cable. Remove the outer cover by releasing the tabs, purple arrow, and rotating the cover downwards. Then release the throttle cable that is connected to the main body of the car, green arrow. Finally, remove the two nuts that hold the cover to the chassis, yellow arrow, and disconnect the housing from the body. The housing remains with the engine when you lower it. As you drop the engine, take the air conditioning hoses out of the plastic channel, green arrow, and carefully route them off to the side. Take care when lowering that they don't get crushed, scraped, or damaged. Make sure everything is clear as you are slowly lowering in the engine. The insert photo shows one of the engine harness connections is getting caught up on the lip of the passenger compartment access hole. Take your time, make sure everything is clear and loose. This photo shows the engine about halfway out of the Boxster. The majority of the weight is supported by the floor jack. The jack stands are there for backup and balancing, green arrows. In general, I don't like to support the engine only on the heat exchangers. It puts a lot of stress on the head bolts. To get the engine out, put the engine down on a furniture cart, then jack up the car very high in the air, and then pull the engine out, and lower the car back down to a workable level. Using this method, we did not have to remove the chassis support brace, yellow arrow. This image shows the engine completely and safely removed from the vehicle. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and check out another video in this series.